This video is sponsored by My Heritage, the website, not like my actual heritage. Humans consume less than 1% of the 300 known edible species. But I believe it is human nature to think, God, I want to eat that. Take, for example, the dodo bird. It looks like the flout chicken.png got corrupted, but some 17th century Dutch sailors were like, This you can fly? and ate so many of them, the bird went extinct within just 8 years of its discovery. And this here's what really gets me. In addition to the dodo, over 5 billion species have died out like cowards. So more accurately, humans only really have access to 0.0006% of all species. To me, a top dog of the food chain and a completionist, that's like nothing. So today on The Poopy Show, we go deep into answering the question, can scientists put extinct animals back on the menu? And will I ever get to eat my favorite dinosaur and 100% the food pyramid? Let's find out. Before we discuss ancient predecessors of modern day species, I would like to discuss the ancient predecessors of your mom. <laughs> As well as my mom. Thanks to this video's sponsor, MyHeritage, this task has never been easier. I've partnered with MyHeritage because if you're cool like me and hyperfixate on niche histories, you may already know that MyHeritage is the leading global service for family history research and DNA testing. Trusted by 90 million users, MyHeritage not only makes building your family tree a simple and fun activity, it also gives you access to powerful tools that can help you research your family and grow your tree. Remember when you made your first social media account in middle school and adding in all your friends was the most enjoyable 2 hours you ever got out of it? Well, building my family tree gave me the same euphoria I got from doing that, but with the promise of learning more about the past. Since MyHeritage gives you access to 20 billion historical documents. Wow, well, look at that. I feel infinitely more important now. I was also on the phone with my mom talking to her like I'm trying to collect all the Pokemon, but instead it's relatives I used to know nothing about. In addition to all this, MyHeritage has advanced AI technologies for repairing, enhancing, colorizing, and even animating historical photos. Hey, I do that. That is so cool, that's literally the enhanced image TV trope in detective series, but it actually works. Can you blow that up a little? Enhance? I mean, look at that, my grandma's beehive hairdo has never looked more 21st century. It's a good way to find a bunch of cool stuff about your family, and you can sign up for a 14 day free trial. So thank you MyHeritage for sponsoring this video and giving me a cool new project to hyperfixate on. I will not rest until my tree goes back to the sky. Now let's talk dinosaur meat. The urge to eat weird animals has been strangely prevalent amongst scientists throughout history. Scientists such as Charles Darwin, the father of evolution, who made eating the animals he studied an almost necessary step in his scientific method. See, in his earlier days, Darwin was a proud member of Cambridge University's Glutton Club, which was essentially a group of students devoted to eating birds and beasts, which were before unknown to the human palate. And he must have really enjoyed his time there because throughout his life and travels, Darwin continued to eat the most outrageous meats nature has to offer. For example, he not only ate a giant tortoise, he also felt compelled to drink its actual piss, describing it as quite limpid with only a very slightly bitter taste. Other animals on the menu included armadillos, pumas, iguanas and literally every bird he laid his eyes on including a very special one served to him at a Christmas dinner in 1833. Darren writes in his notes that he suddenly realized he was eating an extremely rare species that he was actually supposed to be studying. Upon this discovery, he immediately stopped eating, but he only managed to save the head as well as some bones and a few feathers to send back to the UK, with, I hope, a note saying, Sorry, I ate a it. His favorite meat though was a 20-pound rodent, usually assumed to be an agouti. So you really can't trust the palate of a man who ate a giant rat and concluded Finally, some good fucking food. There seems to be something with scientists and craving weird animal meats. But the scientist whose experience most aligned with my desire wasn't even a biologist. Robert Fonson was a geologist studying rock layers in Alaska in the late 1970s. That's where he discovered the 30,000 year old frozen carcass of the now extinct giant steppe bison. He states that he wasn't trying to prove anything when he tore some meat off of it. He was just curious about the taste which he described as having a weird stringy leathery texture with little flavor beyond the ambient pungent rankness. And you might be thinking, ew, 
But I don't see a difference between this and the full-on expedition that is taking out a three-year-old deeply frozen box of discontinued chicken nuggets and eating those. I mean, hey, if you can handle the mysterious abomination that is processed ham, you can probably eat anything. And Mark Sedell agrees with me on this. He says us omnivores eat what we are familiar with. He explains that if you think about it, the contents of a lobster are not dramatically different from the contents of a crayfish, and the crayfish isn't that different from a grasshopper. And while you might not be interested in a grasshopper if it was served at a buffet, many people from different cultures would gladly have it. Okay, we established that scientists want to eat weird shit, so of course they would be working hard to bring back weird shit that is extinct so they can eat it. On to the methods. Method one is rewinding evolution. Let's roll the footage back to the expired box of chicken nuggets. These bad boys are at least 43% chicken. Many bottom birds are descendants of dinosaurs, but after millions of years they evolved to be actually quite pathetic and not quite dinosaurs. But is it possible to somehow undo those millions of years of evolution? Scientists from Yale and Harvard have attempted just that. Barton John Buller, assistant professor of vertebrate paleontology and zoology at Yale, says that Until very late in development, the body of a bird looks not like a bird body, but more like a dinosaur body, except the beak. Birds have a unique set of genes that cause their face to grow outward, eventually forming a beak. His team of scientists removed this bird-specific gene to replicate the molecular activity of their early ancestors. Then they let those embryos grow and... Oh, sweet, man-made horrors beyond my comprehension. It resulted in a chicken-raptor hybrid skull. When I affected the earlier genes, the later genes diverted back to a more reptile-like gene, Buller explained. What we had done was an experimental rolling back of evolution to resurrect this form that hadn't really been seen on Earth for millions of years. But that's not quite the velociraptor of my dreams. Based on claw specimens, Buller suggests dinosaurs would have tasted more like birds of prey since the talons of a velociraptor were shaped exactly like an eagle talon. So the meat would be more gamey. Since eagles are carnivores and the taste of any meat is affected by the animal's muscle composition and what it eats. Backwards evolution does hold promise in terms of me getting actual dino nuggets and their purest, truest form one day. But it's not really as exciting as the second method, which is cloning. While researching the backwards evolution method, I came across a 2007 study in the journal Science which revealed that some protein sequences from a T-Rex fossil closely resembled the protein sequences found in a chicken. And I thought, well, someone should just clone that T-Rex, right? So I looked into it a bit further and, oh, it turns out the tissue was a contaminant and the science journal has no integrity. It was too good to be true anyways, considering the fact that the oldest sample of proteins is only 3 million years old and, you know, the T-Rex fossils were about 68 million years old. To clone a dinosaur, one would need an intact living cell. And it has only ever been successful using a host animal of the same species. Now, a Japanese research team theorized that using fossilized sperm to inseminate the eggs of a related mammal can bring back extinct species. Of course, the resulting creature would be a hybrid, but that's close enough in my book. Still, in terms of dinosaurs, the oldest preserved sex cells are thought to be around 50 million years old and belong to a class of earthworms. And although incredibly well preserved, they contained no organic material. And that's because DNA molecules break down after 7 million years. That pretty much means dinosaurs have no chance of de-extinction. And although we have DNA from more recently extinct species, cloning them is still virtually impossible. Reconstructing complete strands of an extinct species DNA would require require technology far beyond what exists today. But I'm not currently interested in the animal. This is about meat. We don't need to clone the animal. We don't need to rewind evolution either. I don't need the full dinosaur. It would be funny to eat a comically large steak in a high-end Jurassic Park themed establishment. But I just want a bite. One bite. And we might be able to grow that one bite. Method number three. Lab-grown meat. The lab-grown meat industry is booming right now. I mean, a group of American scientists has enabled you to eat yourself by growing steak from human cheek tissue. Oh, sweet, man-made horrors beyond my comprehension. It's these cheeks, not those cheeks, but tell me this isn't some South Park shit. 2050, I might tell someone to eat my ass presenting them with this. 
a steak created from my own ass cell culture supplemented by the protein-rich fetal bovine serum. Eat it. The CEO of Upside Foods, a California-based company that makes meat from cultured chicken cells, says it's similar to brewing beer, but instead of growing yeast or microbes, we grow animal cells. It uses less land, less water, less animals. It's not vegan, it's not even plant-based, but most importantly, it can be any animal you want. As long as it's in our current genome database. Although it's been done as more of a publicity stunt, Vow, an Australian cultured meat startup, has created the Mammoth Meatball. It's lab-grown lamb with the tiniest bit of mammoth DNA in it. And it hasn't been eaten by anyone just yet. One of the creators states, We're talking about a protein that hasn't existed for 5,000 years. I've got no idea what potential allergens might be in this particular protein. Listen. I have no self-restraint or any regard for my safety when it comes to eating questionable foods. So you put me in a room with that meatball and the question of this artificial meat safety, I guarantee you, will be answered. And I know de-extinction sounds really exciting, but it's also really expensive. So expensive that the funds for every one attempt to bring back an extinct animal, if given to prevent current living animals from going extinct, could actually save eight. The dodo entering the KFC menu is something that has more benefits in my eyes in regards to the morality and economics of the extinction. Some of you might feel a bit weirded out by eating something that never lived. But again, it's really just societal pressure and norms keeping you from living life to its fullest. Because have you seen the stuff kids eat? Little Timmy over there eating worms and crayons and shit, he gets it. And the childhood favorite of mine used to be those tiny dinosaur toys. Mmm, exquisite, yes, nibbling on the plastic tail of a velociraptor until it releases its sweet crude oil flavor. It's as close as heaven as we can get. And technically I've eaten so much fake dinosaur in my life, I'd gladly eat some fake chicken. And the lesson of today, it's much cheaper to prevent modern species from going extinct than to bring back the Ice Age cast, so eat my ass or whatever. We had some fun tracing back extinct species, now you must go and trace back your lineage. By scanning this QR code or clicking the link in the description, go to myheritage.com and sign up for their 14-day free trial. Once again, thank you to MyHeritage for sponsoring this video.